The 2019 World Junior Championship Tournament has now come to a close. In today's video, we're going to take a look at who I think were some of the top players in this tournament, as well as some of the top big names that were kind of underwhelming. We'll discuss both sides of that coming up next. Hey everyone and welcome to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. We review and discuss all 31 NHL teams as well as international tournaments. So if you're a huge hockey fan, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So as I mentioned, this video is going to be basically a recap of my opinion of who the top players were of the 2019 World Junior Championship Tournament, as well as a look at some players who I thought were kind of underwhelming, who were expected to deliver big performances for some bigger names that we've already been well known around the hockey world, mostly players that have already been drafted, uh, mostly in the 2018 NHL draft and some guys that I just kind of thought might have failed to deliver here but let's jump in and take a look and I'll give you my thoughts on the top players let's start with the goaltenders now to be completely honest I think there was a lot of great goaltending in this tournament if you take a look at the statistics uh, almost every country had a goaltender with a really excellent save percentage we're talking like 920 and up now, the top goaltender at the actual tournament was voted to be uh, Kachakov from Russia. I certainly think he was worthy of being named a top goaltender, but I do think there's lots of other goalies here that should have been considered as well. And there's really not too many bad things I could say across the board. A lot of teams got some great goaltending. Uh, and like starting with Finland and Lukanen, I mean, really, he helped the team win the gold medal. He was instrumental, had a terrific save percentage, uh, get them all the victories they needed. It was certainly big in some clutch moments. You throw in Kachikov from Russia, who was named the top goalie of the tournament. You can talk about uh, Michael DiPietro from Team Canada. Even though Canada lost out in the quarterfinals, he was absolutely amazing and had a 952 save percentage. I mean, you can't do a whole lot better than that. Caden Primo from Team USA was absolutely spectacular as well. I uh, got the team all the way to the gold medal matchup. And really, uh, Team USA did not lose on because of Primo. He was absolutely outstanding the entire way through. It was a brick wall back there for the U.S. It was a big reason why they were able to take home the silver medal. I mean, you take a look across some other teams like Hollenstein for the Swiss and Ursen for Sweden. They also had some terrific performances as well. You certainly can't forget Czech Republic goaltender Luka Dostal. Dostal was absolutely amazing and really, in my opinion, was the Czech Republic's best player by far. Uh, he really kept them in a lot of games and gave them a chance to win. They would have done much better if a lot of their top forwards would have been able to produce more offense like we expected. But overall, Dostal is an incredible goaltender and I can't wait to see him play in the NHL someday. So overall, I thought all these goaltenders were absolutely fantastic. All kinds of great performances for their teams. The save percentages were crazy. Uh, so really, you got to give these guys all an incredible round of applause for putting up incredible performances. But if I had to pick the goaltender of the tournament, for me, I'd go with Lukanen just because he brought his team to the gold medal. Nothing against the Russian goalie who was named by the tournament as a top goalie. Uh, he certainly deserves a lot of credit as well. But in my opinion, I think Lukanen deserves that title. Now let's take a look at some of the top defensemen for the tournament. And in my opinion, the absolute best defender in this tournament has to be Russia's Alex Romanov. I mean, he had put up eight points of uh, being tied for the lead for the tournament in points. Absolutely phenomenal for a defenseman especially. Uh, but he was a really, really big reason for Russia to have so much success and to get as far as they did. He racked up a lot of assists, played a lot of big minutes in a lot of situations, and I thought Romanov was absolutely fantastic for Team Russia. In my opinion, the next top defender was probably Henry Yokoharu of Team Finland. Uh, of course, the Chicago first round pick uh, playing for Team Finland. Uh, had an excellent tournament as well. It was certainly a huge part of Team Finland going all the way for gold. Of course, you can't forget the dynamic duo in Team Sweden, Eric Brandstrom and Adam Bokvist. Unfortunately, Sweden had another perfect preliminary round and lost out in the quarterfinals and another shocking upset to Team Switzerland. Brandstrom put up four goals in five games. I thought he was absolutely fantastic as their captain. Provided a lot of offense from the back end. And as I mentioned in the opener for Sweden, I really thought that Brandstrom and Bokvist were going to be key to their success. And they certainly played their roles very, very well. Unfortunately, they couldn't get a lot of the other parts of the team, especially in the forward group, in my opinion, to produce enough offense to really go any further. But Adam Bokvist and Eric Brandstrom, I thought both had fantastic tournaments. Brandstrom is a Vegas Golden Knight prospect and Bokvist is a Chicago prospect. They both have big futures ahead of them heading to the NHL very, very soon. And those teams should be very excited to have them. I also thought a couple other Russian defensemen were absolutely fantastic. Samrik and uh, Alexiev, I thought both had great tournaments as well. Had four and five points apiece, respectively. Um, another couple of guys kind of flew under the radar a little bit, but certainly had some big performances. Uh, the Russian blue line certainly played a big role in helping them produce the offense that they did. And a lot of those guys back there have big futures in the NHL. 
Another name I wanted to mention quickly as well was Ty Smith from Team Canada. I thought he had a fantastic tournament. I mean, he, he wasn't always like the, the main name or the biggest name on the blue line. A lot of that spotlight kind of went to Evan Bouchard. But in my opinion, Ty Smith was Team Canada's most versatile defenseman, playing a lot of power play minutes, a lot of shorthanded minutes. And as the tournament went on and the power play was not being successful with Bouchard at the helm, they did give Ty Smith more time uh, towards the back end of the tournament here. But I thought he played absolutely fantastic for Team Canada and deserves a lot of recognition for a tournament well played. Now let's take a look at some of the top forwards in this tournament. We get to start here with U.S. forward Ryan Paling. Now, Paling was voted tournament MVP. Unfortunately, you know, his performance was as great as it was. It didn't lead to the U.S. to gold. But individually, he was an absolute machine, especially when Jack Hughes missed a lot of time. Guys like Ryan Paling and Josh Norris of Team USA really stepped up. I mean, Paling's been known more as a two-way responsible center iceman, but he certainly showed his offensive prowess in this tournament, as did Josh Norris. I think both have really solid NHL futures ahead of them. But Ryan Paling, I do agree with the fact that he was voted tournament MVP. Uh, certainly put up a lot of great goals, a lot of great assists, and was a key member of Team USA going to the silver medal. And they said Josh Norris wasn't far behind him, in my opinion, but Paley was just that much a little bit more further into the U.S. mix here. But, of course, other guys like Philip Kershev for Team Switzerland deserves a ton of credit. Another Chicago Blackhawk prospect in this tournament had an absolutely monster tournament, putting up a lot of goals. He scored six goals, was tied for the lead in the tournament. It was a big reason why the Swiss were able to get to the bronze medal game. Uh, certainly was absolutely huge for them. I mean, he wasn't the only part of Switzerland that you know made that a strong team, but it was certainly the uh, the top player from that team for sure, and one of the top forwards and top players in the entire tournament. Of course, you can't forget the Russian trio of guys like Kravstov and Kostin and uh, Denisenko of Team Russia. Those guys were absolutely instrumental in Team Russia getting as far as they did. Of course, Clem Costin, you know, a bit of a controversial figure in Vancouver, was certainly having a lot of fun with the crowd. Uh, you know, was certainly booed a lot when the after the the Russian team lost, uh, and when he refused to take the picture, uh, getting one of the top three uh, uh, awards for being on Team Russia. Uh, that sound stirred things up. He then issues an apology, and then the next game, of course, after the goal celebration with the plugging of the ears, so we couldn't hear the crowd, kind of stirred things up again. You know, he's yelling at the crowd quite a bit as well. You know, certainly a bit of a love hate relationship with Costin and. Vancouver crowd and I certainly expect that to carry over once he makes it to, to the Blues lineup uh, in the NHL when St. Louis comes to Vancouver. It should be very interesting to see how the Canuck fans react to him but certainly you know uh, a polarizing figure in this tournament for sure but either way he's full of personalities nice to see it on display uh, and you know it's nice to see Team Russia having a lot of success they certainly had a lot of fun players to watch as well not only those guys but even youngsters like Paul Colson and even uh, Sleppets as well I mean Sleppets had a, if you look at the statistics he had a great tournament but the bulk of that really came uh, in that bronze medal game that was really his best game by far of the tournament as well but a lot of Russian players certainly were very fun very highly offensive and put up a lot of points were incredibly fun to watch of course you could also mention a couple other forwards including Telvidi from Finland I thought he was absolutely fantastic for the Finns and helping him lead to the gold medal and in my opinion uh, Team Canada's top forward was Morgan Frost Morgan Frost had an absolutely fantastic tournament from start to finish was more consistent and it was certainly one of the more creative forwards like I said if it was me behind the bench I would have picked Frost to take that penalty shot but we can't go back in time obviously Maxime Comtois was picked by the coach and you know what's done is done here but Frost I thought was an absolutely terrific tournament for Team Canada. Cody Glass was probably the next best, in my opinion, for that team. Uh, but overall, I thought Frost kind of led the way with the offense and the creativity and uh, creating a lot in the Ozone and certainly has a big future ahead of him here with the Flyers organization once he makes it to the NHL more than likely next season. And of course, another surprise performer in this tournament was Gatyakov from Kazakhstan, who ended up putting up eight points in this tournament as well. I mean, even though Kazakhstan didn't really accomplish a whole lot, they lost all their games except for the relegation round against Denmark, but he was involved in pretty well all of their goals in the preliminary round, and I believe most of the goals they scored in the Denmark game as well. Um, so he was certainly one of the few players on the team in Kazakhstan to be able to really produce and compete against a lot of these other players, and it was absolutely instrumental in them having any chance in any game they were in. He's by far their best player, in my opinion, and certainly he had a chance to stick out as being one of the more productive forwards in this tournament as well. Now let's jump over and take a look at some of the players I thought were a little bit underwhelming. Now the only reason these guys were underwhelming is they come into this tournament with a little bit more name recognition, uh, you know, obviously a little bit more fanfare behind them. Most of these guys were all 2018 draft selections. Many of them here for the second time in their careers, uh, you know, and expected to play big parts in their country's, you know, success or lack thereof in some of these cases. Like, for example, Philip Sedina, 
Obviously, Czech Republic forward, expected to be one of the more offensive dynamos in this tournament. Really had a lot of games where he wasn't a lot noticeable, and I was very disappointed with his play. I mean, he uh, was expected to make the NHL this year. Detroit's opted to put him into their American Hockey League system, which didn't come as a huge surprise, which necessarily wasn't a knock against Zadina being ready. They do that a lot with their prospects. They tend to really take their time and develop them slowly. Uh, but then he obviously he was loaned to come to this tournament, and uh, you know so far didn't really produce a whole lot of anything. And I was really underwhelmed with his game as well. I mean, a couple of Canadian players I thought were underwhelming as well. One being Owen Tippett had a pretty solid start to the tournament, then kind of faded off. I mean, Tippett was kind of known as a one-trick pony when he was drafted as a guy who's you know got a wicked shot, natural goal scorer, you know, straight down the wing in the net. Um, but he really showed early on in this tournament he can be a lot more creative and not just with his shot but passing as well. But then things kind of disappeared in the bigger games and he was a non-factor. So I was kind of disappointed in him later into the tournament. Same thing with Canadian defenseman Evan Bouchard. Uh, there was many times into the draft that his skating was really questioned. It was a, a knock against him as, you know, for maybe some of the other defensemen in the draft were going to turn out to be, you know, a little bit more NHL ready or a little bit more, uh, you know, dynamic down the road because they're better skaters. And uh, Evan Bouchard really proved that his skating needs work. And there's many cases I saw in this tournament where he uh, just wasn't able to catch up some of the other players. Ellie Tolvin and Team Finland certainly did not have an overall great tournament. Yes, his team was able to win the gold medal. And towards the end of the tournament, he certainly picked up his play. It was much stronger, but early on, I just thought he wasn't enough of a factor, wasn't producing enough offense. It was a big part of the reason why Finland kind of struggled early on in the tournament. Uh, so Tolvanen, I do expect a little bit more out of him. I really thought he'd really shine hard and be one of the top producers of this tournament for offense and wasn't quite there, even though the team still had a lot of success. He certainly contributed in other ways. And like said, and towards the end, when it mattered most, he was more uh, more effective. But overall, I would have liked to have seen uh, Tolvan have a little bit better. Lastly here, I want to touch base on Quinn Hughes, obviously defenseman for Team USA. And I was kind of hoping to see the Hughes brothers play together quite a bit. Unfortunately, his brother Jack missed a bunch of games with an undisclosed lower body injury. Uh, and I wouldn't say Quinn Hughes had a bad tournament as well. I was just really looking forward to him really breaking out, especially in front of the Vancouver fans where he'll be playing in the NHL and really showing uh, a lot more of his dynamic abilities that he's shown here in the past. He said, I don't think he had a bad tournament at, at all. I just kind of would have liked to have seen a little bit more of his dynamic abilities come out and be on display in this tournament. So that is all my top players, as well as players that I thought were a little bit underwhelming in this tournament. I'd certainly love to hear what your, your thoughts were. Who did you think were the best players in the 2019 World Junior Championship Tournament? And which players were you maybe expecting just a little bit more from and might have been underwhelmed or disappointed with their play? If you're new to the channel here, I hope to consider subscribing. As I mentioned, we cover all 31 NHL teams as well as all these international tournaments. This will be our final video on the World Junior Championships. We can't look forward enough to the 2020 tournament coming up here in the Czech Republic next Boxing Day, December the 26th. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. We will catch you next time.